Church marketing sounds tricky, right? Well, it doesn't have to be. And in this video, we're gonna break down some of the newest and best strategies to market your church effectively and help your church grow. And the best part is that all but one of these ideas is gonna cost your church absolutely nothing. Also, if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna share one ultra popular church marketing method that in my experience, just does not work anymore. Are you ready to supercharge your church's growth? Let's do this. Well, hey guys, I'm Thomas Costello from Reach Right, and here our mission is to help churches reach more people and grow. And in addition to Reach Right, I've actually pastored three different churches in three different parts of the country, and over the years, we've picked up what is working for churches and what isn't working for churches when it comes to church marketing. So we're gonna break down five of the things that are working for churches right now that you need to know. And here's the first one, short form vertical video. Of course, I'm talking about channels like TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook Reels, and YouTube Shorts. Those four areas are one of the best opportunities for churches right now, and here's why. Whenever social media platforms release a new feature or a new social media platform starts to rise to the top like TikTok has over the past few years, all of the other social channels will scramble to try and get some of those same eyeballs. And that's exactly what has happened with short form video over the last several years. It remains one of the best opportunities to get the message of Jesus in front of people for the first time. Churches really have an advantage over just about every other organization. You see, we're making new content week in and week out because we're preaching sermons. And if you're like most churches now, you are recording those sermons and you have video of it. And you can take those sermons and edit them down to a short form vertical format that's less than 60 seconds and post them onto all four channels. We used to discourage churches from reposting the same thing on multiple channels, but in this case, it makes total sense. If you're looking for some insights on how to make short form vertical videos from your weekly sermon videos, we actually have a video that lays down all the ins and outs of exactly how you can do that. I'll link to it up in the corner here. The second church marketing strategy is one that is so important. Your church needs to take advantage of the Google ad grant. This is a $10,000 a month grant that Google gives to churches at no cost, there's no tricks, $10,000 on the Google ad platform. So that means those ads that come up when people do searches online, you have 10,000 free dollars to play with on Google's platform to use that. If there is a catch, it would be that the Google grant is not something that you can just set and forget. It's not something that you can just start running ads and you'll immediately be able to spend all $10,000 of Google's money. We've made a lot of great content about how your church can effectively use the Google grant. You can click on the link up above and down below in the description to get more details on that, but your church absolutely needs to claim this grant as soon as possible. The last church I pastored was in Madison, Wisconsin, and when we took advantage of the Google grant, it made a huge impact on our church. We went from a church that was seeing only a few visitors every month. In fact, most weeks we never saw visitors. A few years after we started running the Google grant and using $10,000 from Google each month, we were averaging close to 17 visitors every single week at a small to mid-sized church. So it makes a huge impact. What kind of a difference would 17 new visitors every week make at your church? This is the power of the Google grant and one that every church should be taking advantage of. The third church marketing strategy is taking advantage of Facebook ads. And this is the one paid option that we're gonna go over in this because I think it is really worth it. If you're gonna invest your church's money anywhere, I think Facebook ads is probably the best place to do that. And there are a few reasons why. The first of them is that you have unparalleled targeting when it comes to Facebook ads. It has never been this way in the history of advertising that you can get so laser focused and only show your ads to the exact right people that are most likely to respond to the ads that you're running out there. Now, for most churches, you're gonna say something like, well, that seems a little bit strange because don't we wanna reach everybody? Shouldn't my church want to send ads to anybody? Obviously, everybody has equal value in God's eyes, right? And that's absolutely true. But the nice thing about Facebook ads is you can tailor your messaging and tailor your ads to the exact right people to see them. Let's say your church is having a big vacation Bible school. You're planning this and you want to get as many people from your community to know about it. 
The great thing about Facebook ads is you can have a laser focused ad campaign to exactly the people that are gonna be interested in Vacation Bible School. And hint, that is going to be moms of young children. You're not spending your money on reaching empty nesters or 21 year old people that don't have any kids. You can laser focus your attention on moms of preschoolers and elementary kids. And another great advantage of Facebook ads is that you can get started with them with a very small budget. A few years ago at my church, we were advertising a harvest party that we were running and we had a budget of $20 to spend on this. And with that $20, we actually saw 120 families come out to our harvest party that weren't part of our church. And they heard about it by and large from our Facebook ads that we put out there. So it remains one of the best opportunities and a great value. One more thing to mention, maybe you're of the camp that thinks, well, Facebook, that's more for older people. The great thing about Facebook ads is that they also appear on Instagram. And so you can promote your content on both Facebook and Instagram and reach a really wide audience. The fourth church marketing strategy that you need to pay attention to is local SEO. And this is a really big one. Now, let me define what I mean when I say local SEO. You know how when you do a search at the very top, you're gonna see the ads. We talked about that already and how you can reach people with the Google ad grant. But right below that, the next thing you'll typically see is a map and the three top local search results for any search topic. So for churches, one of the best things you can do is make sure that your church ranks in what we call that map pack there. And the way that you do that is by executing a local SEO strategy. And again, the great thing about this is that it's totally free for churches. There's a few things you need to do to kind of get started with local SEO. And you can actually do all of these in just a couple of hours. The first one is you wanna make sure your Google business profile, which used to be known as Google My Business, you wanna make sure that's perfectly dialed in. You wanna answer every question they have of your church. You wanna put in photography. If you could add video, you want to put that in, but you want to answer every question about it. That includes things like your exact address, your contact information, your business hours, whether or not you're open on holidays. Google is going to ask you all those things. And the more information you get into there and the more complete your profile is, the more likely Google will be to show it to people when they're searching for that term churches near me, which by the way, is the most searched term that people use to find local churches. So once you've done that, your next step is to make sure that other listing sites actually have your information on them as well. And there are dozens, if not hundreds of different listing sites that you could list with, but you wanna make sure you hit the high ones and you wanna make sure your name, address and phone number, which we call the NAP in the SEO world, you wanna make sure that it is identical on all those other platforms. Now the four main sites you wanna make sure you have your listing dialed in on are Yelp, Apple Maps, Bing Maps, and on Facebook. If you have those four, others will start to pick up on that content and you're well on your way to optimizing for local SEO. And then the third part of really getting things set up for local SEO is to make sure you are getting reviews from people that are a part of your church or have been to your church. And those reviews should generally be positive. So a lot of people think, well, that seems kind of weird. Why would I ask people to review my church? This isn't Amazon, it's not a product. What is a church review? And I think a better way to think of it is think of them as online testimonies for your church. This is what people say about your church, who they think you are and what their experience has been. But reviews are one of the biggest signals that Google uses to estimate the prominence of a business or in this case, a ministry. So get people to review your church and you will see more results on local SEO. Now the last one, and I actually could have made a case that this should have been the first one on our list, is you wanna make sure that your website has fantastic calls to action or CTAs. And let me take a little bit of time to explain what I mean by this. It used to be that people thought of websites as an online brochure. And sadly, a lot of churches still approach their website in this way. It's a place to put your events and your service times and just information. And that is really about a 10 year old philosophy when it comes to web design. 
One of the most important things you can do is have a clear next step for people to take when they are on your church website. Because remember, all of these other ideas we've talked about so far, they're all going to lead more traffic to your church website. And if all we do there is give people information, we've really missed a huge opportunity. What we need to do instead is we need to take the time to ask people to take a next step call them to action. And there's two primary ones that I want to talk about. The first one is what we'd call a plan your visit or a let us know you're coming form. So if someone has heard about your church from local SEO or the Google grant or Facebook ads, or they clicked over from one of your short form videos, the next thing that you need to do is ask them to take a next step. And there's no better way to do that than to ask them to commit on the website to plan their visit. When people have gone through that step of planning their visit or let the pastor know that they're coming, they're much more likely to actually show up on a Sunday morning, especially if you follow our best practice of once they've signed up and let you know they're coming, that you take a step to follow up with them before they ever show up. Let them know, hey, I'm really excited to meet you. I'll be at the back and I'd love to shake your hand at the end of service. Let's make sure we connect. Another way to do this is through pre-registration. And I'm talking specifically about pre-registering your kids. Now, we've all been in this situation before where you get to church on Sunday and the first time someone checks in their kids, a lot of times there's a lot of information that has to get passed through so that you can do a good job and safely take care of people's kids. So you need to know things about how old they are and who their guardian are and who can safely check them out and what allergies they may have. And there's all kinds of other information that your church may need. What if we could pull that forward and pull it onto the website so that people can save themselves as much as 10 minutes on Sunday morning and get right into service. If you offer this kind of a call to action, you're again likely to get people to sign up ahead of time, which will allow you to follow up with them. And this is one of the best marketing strategies that you can do for your church. Now, I promised before we started that I was gonna give you one marketing method that you should not do anymore because it just has diminishing results. And to be honest, this marketing method was the most popular way to market your church just about a decade ago. In fact, when I started helping churches with marketing, this was the number one thing that churches were likely to spend money on. And I'm talking about direct mail marketing campaigns. You do not have the level of targeting that you have with other methods like Facebook ads. With direct mail advertising, you can only tire areas or entire zip codes, and you can't target any of the demographic information that people may have other than where they're living. Now, there's a few exceptions. I know that there's some tools you can use to have new movers get new mail, and that may still have a place there, but really that brings us to the other part with direct mails. It's just really expensive. You're going to almost always spend at least 50 cents for every single postcard that you send after printing and postage. And that includes the discount that nonprofits get when you send postcards as a church. To put that in perspective, you'll pay less than a cent for each impression that your Facebook ads will get. And again, it's a much narrower audience in most cases. And on top of that, there's a lot of difficulty in measuring the success of a direct mail marketing campaign. You have to actually ask people when they show up, hey, how did you hear about us? And they have to remember that they got an ad and they received it and they looked at it and they decided to come. Whereas with Facebook and these other methods that are more digital, there is so much information that you can use to better inform your marketing decisions in the future. And lastly, direct mail, let's face it, it's just annoying. Who likes to get a piece of junk mail? And in most cases, I immediately take that junk mail that someone paid good money for and place it directly into the trash. So my advice, skip the direct mail, put all of that money into Facebook ads and you'll get better results. But these are just some of the things that we're seeing working for churches right now. I wanna know what you think. Let us know down in the comments, is there something that's working really well for your church when it comes to church marketing? We'd love to hear about it. Also, we put out new content like this every single week, so make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and we'll see you next time.